Welcome to our netcast of our worship service for March 14th, the fourth Sunday of Lent. In the name of our Creator, welcome. First time visitor to our netcast or one who has been here many times, child or elder or in between, caregiver, caretaker, disciples, children of God, neighbors all, loved and loving, welcome in the name of the sovereign God. Let us now still our hearts as we listen to the prelude. Hear these words as our call to worship. Come into God's presence. It is in God that we live and move and have our being. Come travel a Lenten journey, a journey together as a community of faith and as alone. Come hear Christ's call to love God with all we are and to love our neighbor as we love ourselves. Come into God's presence and express our love. Let us pray. God of the smooth road, the rough places, and the wilderness paths, we thank you for giving us a safe place for blessing all of creation. God of the hungry times, the difficult times, and all the times of our lives, we ask for your guidance, wisdom, and spirit in our worship, in our work, in our choices, in our lives. Amen. And now let us sing hymn number 402, We Are One, verse 1, 2, and 4, 
from Voices United. Let us pray. Lord, open our hearts and souls to fill them with your abundant, transforming love. Open our hearts and minds so as the scriptures are read and your word proclaimed, we may be blessed and be a blessing. Amen. Our first scripture reading is Psalm 95. Come, let us sing for joy to the Lord. Let us shout aloud to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before him with thanksgiving and extol him with music and song. For the Lord is the great God, the great King above all gods. In his hands are the depths of the earth, and the mountain peaks belong to him. The sea is his, he, for he made it, and his hands formed the dry land. Come, let us bow down in worship. Let us kneel before the Lord God, our Maker. For he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture, the flock under his care. Today, if only you would hear his voice. And the second scripture is from Matthew chapter 19, beginning at verse 16. Just then a man came up to Jesus and asked, Teacher, what good thing must I do to get eternal life? Why do you ask me about what is good? Jesus replied. There is only one who is good. If you want to enter life, keep the commandments. Which ones? He inquired. Jesus replied, You shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not give false testimony. Honor your father and mother and love yourself, your neighbor as yourself. All these I have kept, the young man said. What do I still lack? Jesus answered, If you want to be perfect, go, sell your possessions and give to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven. Then come follow me. And the young man was sad. Reevaluating our use of time and talent. 
As we reflect today, the fourth Sunday of Lent, on our use of time and talents, let us be thinking about perhaps our regret of past misuse of those precious resources and the will to do better as we seek to live in honor of the Lord. This is our process in Lent. As we go through this reflection, let me begin with some parameters in, for our thinking. First, this is not a message about giving all of our time, all of our talents, all of our possessions to some Christian charity, community program, or for the welfare of others. As we think about our use of time and talents, I think we need to agree that we should not be involved in criminal activities nor in activities that directly or indirectly specifically harm someone. Neither should we be self-harming. So, as I think about living a decent life, I have to ask myself, how much of my time will I waste as a retiree? How much will I spend for my own pleasure? How much will I use for others? And similarly, I think about money and talents because I want to honor God. The parable of the rich man in Matthew 19 does not teach us that we should give everything away, but it does teach us that our wealth and possessions is not where our heart should be. We are disciples of Christ who seek to love God first and love others like ourselves. Before I consider how that applies to me and my use of time and talents, let me tell you four stories of four different individuals who I see are an exemplary in their use of time and talents to help others change our world, improve it, and make local situations better. The first one is Afro Shah, a young lawyer in India who was moved by the ghastly sight he saw at a local beach in India. It looked more like a landfill site than a recreation site. It was the most polluted beach in India. And he worked each weekend picking up garbage, while Monday to Friday he worked as a lawyer. Soon others followed his example and helped. It took three years, but finally the turtles returned as the beach was cleaned up to be enjoyed once again. Tons of garbage was removed. When Ofra began in 2015, the world situation regarding plastic waste was this. Five trillion plastic bags used each year. One million plastic bottles bought each minute. 13 million tons of plastic land in our oceans each year. And much on our beaches affecting birds and fish. Ofra went on to other places around the world encouraging cleanups. The United Nations awarded him champion of the earth. My second story is about Marino, a young Japanese scientist who is trying to address the issue that 40% of all lakes and rivers are polluted. He has come up with a material that he can drop in the water to attract contaminated particles and float them to the top for easy removal. And it is all 100% organic. He's using te nanotechnology that is used in waste treatment to decontaminate lakes. His present project is Peru's largest lake. He is changing the world for the better. My third story is from Boyan Slot. 
He's a 26-year-old Dutch inventor who actually began his journey at 16 when he went snorkeling off of Greece. And he did his first TED Talk at 17 about his idea to clean up the ocean. And at 18, he founded the ocean cleanup. There is a mass of debris floating, and it's mainly of plastic, that is called the North Pacific Garbage Patch that covers an area of 1.6 million square kilometers, the area of Texas. He has raised $30 million to launch his first boom in 2018 to clean up this problem. The problem is that the plastic doesn't just compose, but it breaks into smaller debris, causing greater problems as fish and birds consume. His goal is to clean 50% of the patch in five years' time, but that will actually take probably, probably about 60 of his booms to do so each traveling by the power of wind, current, and waves, not by boat power. His second project is to address the problem that 1,000 rivers, which is 1% of all rivers, cause 80% of all water pollution. And yes, those are mainly in China and Asia. So he has come up with the Inceptor a solar-powered boom machine that collects floating debris before it ends up in the ocean. And finally, but not least, we have Ramvir Tonwer, a 26-year-old engineer from Uttar Pradesh, a rural India a area of India. He noticed that local swimming areas and sources of drinking water were polluted. And it was not because of chemical waste, but simple garbage. And he started to educate people of the importance of clean drinking water and the need to care for the source of it. He tried by first educating children at the local schools, then going from home to home, talking to people, and finally holding community meetings. And in 2015, he cleaned the first pond and planted trees around it. After the cleaning, a large pit was built to collect garbage and a double filtration system to prevent smaller particles of waste from entering the water. And volunteers cleaned the pit and the area weekly. The pond was stocked with slush eating fish. And now that pond is a source of clean drinking water. Other villages came to learn how to do a cleanup and revitalization of ponds. Ramvir is now a coordinator for the region, but he's unpaid. He works six days per week, 5 a.m. to 2 p.m. to earn his living as an engineer, even changing jobs in order to volunteer as a coordinator and do the work of water cleaning that he is motivated to do, making his world better. As we seek to live a Christ life and follow the teaching of Jesus, we know that it is all summed up in to love God with our whole being and to love our neighbor as ourself. The parable of the rich man teaches us not to focus on ourself or our riches, to be selfish and self-centered, but to remember others. This Lent, as we reflect on our use of time and talent, let us think of others. As a retiree, I can use my free time and pension to do what I want and to use my abilities to enjoy activities that I want to do. Or I can think about spending time with family, with friends, 
the community, for our social programs. And similarly, I can use my talents helping those people. When I retired from teaching, I knew I did not want to just sit around. Nor was I in a great mindset to continue to teach as a volunteer or as a supply. But I did want to help out at Beavercrest for a while. That is now over, but I still have time and energy to give. And God's spirit and God's word directs me to give. How and to whom? For me, I can answer communication with family and help to certain friends. That is a good start for me. The other scripture passage from Psalms highlights the first priority of our focus on God. In our use of our time and talents, which causes me to think about our use of time to worship regularly and often. Two men from the same church were having coffee when one confessed, I've gone to church for about 30 years and heard about something like a thousand sermons. But for the life of me, I can't remember a single one. So I think I'm wasting my time going. After a moment or two, the other man replied, Over the past 30 years, I've eaten over 30,000 meals, but I cannot recall the entire menu of any of them. But I do know they have nourished me and gave me the strength to do my work. Without them, I would be physically dead. Likewise, without the nourishment of worship, I would be spiritually dead today. Worship is not something we attend on Sunday morning. It is not a spectator sport, nor is it defined by a specific building or a specific ritual. Worship actually is a verb. It's an action. So, in singing those songs, listening to the scriptures and the message, and praying together, we can experience that precious love of God that is for each of us, and in that love, discover a sense of belonging and purpose. Worship takes us into the heart of God. When we worship, we enter God's presence, listen to what God is saying to us, and respond with commitment. I know many of you, like me, are enjoying the flexibility of not being here 10.30 a.m. Sunday morning. But we are also missing that togetherness. And I look forward to coming back. But meanwhile, I should renew a daily moment of worship. To pray, read a Bible passage, meditate on it for a moment, and think about who I am and who God is. How am I relating to God and to others? I invite you to, to this Lenten practice with me to, and to continue it till we meet again and maybe even beyond, to have that moment alone each day with God. May we be this week attentive of our relationship to God and seek to deepen it. And may we be attentive to others and strengthen our bond of love with them. May we use our time and talents wisely in the honor of our Creator. Amen. Now, let us sing from Voices United 372, Though I May Speak.
Let us pray together. Loving God, we thank you for the journey of our lives, with its ups and downs, with its questions and challenges, and with its moments of joy. As we say thank you, we realize there is brokenness in us and in our world. Forgive our selfish acts and our inaction to be a blessing to others. Knowing that we are loved and forgiven, we turn to the world to love it into wholeness. We pray for people living in desert times, facing famine of body or spirit, being tempted away from what is good and just, facing destruction. We pray for healing and wholeness. Lord, we pray for all peoples and leaders, religious, political, and social, for justice, fairness, and compassion to aid the homeless and hungry, to work for peace, economic viability, and environmental stability around the world. Help us as a global village to end racism and treatment of inequality, whatever the basis. This we ask in the powerful name of Jesus, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. And now let us sing hymn number 422, God be with you till we meet again. As we conclude our time together of worship, let us hear these words. As we travel this Lenten pathway, we journey together, a community of faith and also alone. Let us go into God's world, practicing our faith to love God above all and to love our neighbor as we love ourselves. And now may the blessing of God Almighty, Christ's peace, the Creator's love, and the breath of the Holy Spirit go with us. Amen. Now hear 
the postlude.